Almost everyone can agree on the events that unfolded at Chernobyl. It is an established fact that at 1.23.39, the AZ-5 button was pressed, and the control rods began to descend into the reactor. The graphite displacers attached to the bottom of the control rods displaced water in the lower 1.25 metres of the reactor, causing a sudden and dramatic increase in power at the bottom of the core. What nobody can agree on is what happened after 1.23.44 a.m. Some form of explosion tore the building apart, but the nature of the explosion remains unknown. Countless theories have been suggested. These are just a few of them. This theory is by far the strangest theory I have encountered so far, and does away with the universally accepted INSAG-7 version of event, where the stability of the reactor is replaced by a rapid surge in power due to the graphite displacers. Today we will look at earthquake theory, and the conspiracy theory that surrounds it. First, a brief bit about the history. Earthquake theory began in the December 1996 issue of Technology for the Youth in Russia, in which one article claimed an earthquake was detected at 1.39, and therefore the reactor was destroyed by said earthquake. Almost immediately, scientists began poring over it. Of course, the fact that the explosion occurred more than 15 minutes before the earthquake was actually a major issue, and subsequent analysis showed there were more than 80 individual factual errors in the article. And so, the theory died. Until 1997. Not even a year later, and scientists had returned with an alternative argument. This time, they suggested a new time for the earthquake. 1.23.39, plus or minus one second. In 2000, their third study on the matter, this was increased to plus or minus 5.3 seconds. It should be noted that, despite what the authors of this report claim, there is no evidence that any sort of shaking or vibrations occurred at 1.23.39, which this entire theory is based upon. Eyewitnesses state shaking of the building began a few seconds later, at approximately 1.23.43. It has since been accepted that the seismograph data corresponds to the Chernobyl explosion, not an earthquake. Furthermore, given the distance between the supposed epicentre of the earthquake and the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the earthquake's vibrations would reach the site at 1.23.45, two seconds after the power surge begins, and one second after the believed time of the explosion. They also use an incorrect time for the explosions. The articles specify a time of 1.23.58 instead of the generally accepted 123.44 to 123.48 timing. All of these things are definitely worth considering before we discuss the theory. And now, to discuss the actual events of earthquake theory. We begin not at the nuclear power plant, but between 10 and 15 kilometers east, and 1 kilometer below ground. At the same time that the order is given to press the AZ-5 button, a tremor in the ground occurs, of between magnitude 6 and 7. This value is generated by the supposed collapse of a church close to the epicentre, though this has never been verified. Regardless, the surface waves of this earthquake spread outwards in all directions at approximately 2.9 kilometres per second. When they reach the nuclear power plant, a large number of technological failures occur. This also includes in the very graphite stack of the RBMK reactor. The graphite blocks exclusively in Unit 4 are disrupted only, despite being the furthest from the epicenter of the earthquake. As a direct result of this, the control rods are unable to descend further into their channels, leaving the graphite displacers fixed in position close to the bottom of the core and the pumps are all simultaneously disconnected, meaning no water reaches the core, 
Again, nobody in Pripyat or at the nuclear power plant mentions an earthquake. The fission rate in the core massively spikes as the graphite endlessly accelerates the reactivity for a period of 15 seconds, at which point an accumulation of explosive gases inside the reactor ignite, causing Yelena to be thrown aside, the building to collapse, and a large volume of debris to be ejected both skywards and around the site. So, what is the chance of this actually occurring? Very slim at best. For one, there is no established fault line or regular pattern of earthquakes in the area. Of course, the proponents of this theory have come up with their own solutions to this problem. Which leads us on to... Secret weapon testing. The basis of this is that, surrounding Chernobyl and Pripyat, there are three secret military weather stations in the form of an equilateral triangle, approximately 65 kilometers apart. Enclosed in this is also the Duga radar array, of course. Each of these stations is also supposed to include multiple methods to analyze the effects of nuclear weapons, such as vibrations. Because of this, conspiracy theorists hypothesize that somewhere in all of this was a secret military weapon that the Soviets intended to use to control both the weather and the ground, including the generation of freak weather and earthquakes. Given that the Duga Array was undergoing testing at this time, conspiracy theorists argue that the disruption to the electromagnetic field in this area due to a combination of this unproved weapon and NATO ionosphere interference in Norway, I'm not making this up, directly caused the earthquake. So, to conclude, earthquake theory is perhaps the least believable and strangest theory proposed about Chernobyl. Wholly reliant on non-existent events and conspiracy theories, and yet it remains existent in the fringes of the history community. There is in fact a documentary about this theory, titled Chernobyl The Secret Factor. Despite winning the top prize at a 1998 award ceremony headed by the European Environment Agency, this film has never surfaced online or been distributed in home media. It is currently lost alongside its twin documentary Chernobyl Russian Roulette and another follow-up by the same director Chernobyl cover-up.